Hello and welcome to the last episode of Objection Handling 101 series. If you've missed the previous episodes, make sure you go back and watch them, otherwise this one will not make much sense to you. If you've already seen those, you are graduating handling of sales objections today. Oh yeah, stay tuned. All right, we talked in the previous three videos about what the APEC method is. We've shown how to go through those steps. So you have to acknowledge the customer. You have to probe the question. You have to answer or try to deflect a customer's concern. And you remember in that probe step, uh, that was kind of a check point where we were trying to make sure that we understand what the customer was saying or asking or stating or objecting about. The last step we're talking today is called confirm and transition. And this is another checkpoint. And the idea of confirm is to ask the customer back if you have answer their question or concern. How do you confirm? Well, it's really simple. You just ask the customer, let me just quickly check if mm, the answer I just provided uh, answers your question or answers your concern. Now, two things might happen here. One not so good and one that we are expecting. The not so good one is that customer tells you, mm, that's really not what I was asking, or they might say, well, I was asking a slightly different thing, or even just start asking more questions. If that happens, this is an indication that you probably didn't completely alleviate their concerns. That's still not terrible. They're still talking to you, they're participating in a conversation, and that's all a good thing, good sign. But now at this point, you will have to go back to that probe part and try to clarify once again what the actual question was, what the actual concern is. Because for me, if a customer says, that's not really what I was asking, it's an indicator that your probe step wasn't complete. So just simply go back in your mind, I mean, go back to that step and ask clarifying questions. Try to truly understand what they are asking. The ideal answer we are expecting here from the customer is for them to say, yeah, that, that answers my question. Thank you. Great. That's it. You're done. End of this video. Wait, no, it's not the end of the video because you've handled the objection, you've provided the proper answer, but now you have to capitalize on that. So now that you've gained a little piece of that trust between the customer and you, and they are starting to think about you as someone who knows what they are talking about, you want to move this conversation, you want to progress this conversation further. Progress to what? So what we want to do, as soon as the customer confirms that, yes, that was a great answer, do the transition step. So you've confirmed that that was a proper answer, and then you do the transition step. If this is a first contact with a customer, what you want to do is secure that next longer call where maybe you'll bring your technical experts. So you need to offer a little bit more incentive to them to secure that call. So you would go and say, Perfect. Thank you so much. Well, based on everything I heard so far, I'd like to set up a call with you where I'll explain you how other companies comparable to yours have managed to increase their customer retention by 30% and decrease their TCO by 20% within one year by migrating to our product. And that's where you want to be. It's really important to have that call to action at the end and to seal the call by agreeing on the next step. So you make sure you have that transition step properly done 
by doing a call to action and securing the next call or next meeting on site. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you thought about it and if there are other topics you'd like me to talk about. Also, make sure you subscribe to the Better Presales channel and click on that bell button so you get notified each time there's a new video like this.